Hey babes, welcome back to my channel. So my name's Lily. If you guys are new to my channel, please subscribe, turn on your post notification, and like this video. Um, so I actually feel weird actually talking to you guys. It's been forever since I've been um in front of the camera. I just wanted to make this video to tell you guys where I have been. I just don't want to come back like nothing. I know I've been gone for a while. I have um had something personally happened to my family and um it really impacted me of course it did it it's regarding my son um so let me just give you guys a quick little story what happened and why i have not been recording so yeah let's get started so this happened in july on july um on july 11 my child is a very active kid um he loves to run around you know be a boy basically like he's really active you know um he likes playing around jumping around being all over the place and um he was not acting himself and that day i told my brother hey could you touch my son because um i feel him kind of hot you know and he's like yeah he's running a little fever you know just give him medicine which i did and um my kid has a fever i usually wait two days um if it doesn't go down with tylenol or motrin whatever i decide to give him i usually make an appointment to take him to see what it is because it could be an infection that he actually needs antibiotics or something like that and um so this happened on saturday so i waited until monday i'm like okay first thing in the morning i'm gonna call if he's still feeling the same i'm gonna call monday in the morning to go in to see the doctor that same day he started throwing up monday morning like around five o'clock in the morning so i'm like okay first thing first i'm gonna call and make an appointment right away when i wake up uh i called and they told me that um just because i said that he had a fever so it's one of the red flags for covid um so they actually didn't want to take him in right away so i'm like okay i'm just gonna call the doctor and i'm just gonna take him in with covid everything's crazy so it's kind of hard for you to get a last minute appointment i sadly my dumbass didn't know that so i didn't thought it was gonna be hard getting him an appointment to begin with so at this point i'm just pissed off at the fact that i'm scared for my son i'm not mad at the people i'm just mad at myself for not um moving faster you know like me not putting one and one together covid like covid like um so that being said once he woke up i'm like okay once he wake up i'm gonna take him to get tested um but the thing was that once he woke up very crying he's like mommy mommy um ayúdame ayúdame and i'm like ¿Qué tienes, papito? i'm like what's wrong and then he's like i can't get up i can't get up okay so once he told me that guys i started freaking out so i took him right away to the hospital i'm like you know what something's wrong with him i have to take him to the er um i cannot wait to take him to get a covid test um there's something wrong with my child you know um so me being the freaking person that i am i let's say if i'm running high temperature i think i'm dying oh imagine being scared of something that your child has that you have no idea because he's telling you that he can't even get up from bed so that alone i'm panicking myself so i get my act together and i take him to the er they started they started doing tests on him and they started like patting down his stomach and then they told me you know what we think is his his appendix and to my surprise honestly i'm like isn't he too young for this i literally thought appendix problem happened to like older like my age type of people like older like not a three-year-old you know and then he's they're like no we're gonna we're gonna take him an x-ray we are gonna do an ultrasound and we'll let you know what's going on what's gonna happen i'm like okay and then the doctor came in he told me something about his, his white blood plates being too low so that alone he's like you know what we're gonna admit you to the hospital while we wait for the results so we could see what's going on because we do know that he does have a problem because when we touch he's really sensitive so we're gonna wait if it's still gonna be the appendix or we're gonna see what's going on i'm like okay so that being said honestly we got admitted to the hospital and this was already july 13th we went to the hospital on july 13th on monday by this we were waiting for the results to see if it was the appendix and everything we actually waited the whole monday uh, so we got a room they came back and told me that it doesn't look like the appendix but that they were gonna do an mri to see if it is the appendix so they could get a better view clear view of everything inside him and um they did so the test results came back like at three in the morning so i remember that i was sleeping on the couch and then i remember people talking in the background and then well you can't sleep honestly no like who could sleep in the hospital people come in people come out so i was always up and um i just remember hearing them 
the doctor was telling the intern, you go wake her up, go wake her up gently. So I woke up, you know, because I just kept on hearing them talk. And I woke up. This was at 3 in the morning. I will never forget this. The intern, I, right away I noticed something was wrong. Because the way the intern and the doctor started talking to me, they changed right away their voice to a more of a sympathy type of voice. They're like, um, we need to talk to you. And we're like, okay. I'm me thinking... He does have an appendix problem. They're going to have to have surgery because he told me that could happen. Um, that they were going to take um, his appendix out if um, it had to do anything with the appendix. And then he's like, well, and he sat down for this part. He pulled up a chair next to me because I sat down. I was more scared. I literally felt like my heart go all the way to the floor. And then he's like, we have the results back. We, we just need to tell you that it's not the appendix. Once he told me it's not the appendix, I felt more bad because I actually wish it was the appendix at that time. He's like, we actually found what we like to call a surprise finding. Something that we're not looking for, but that came out on the x-ray. And then uh, they told me we're actually going to get, we're going to do an MRI on him to get a better clear view. Try to get a better clear view but on the x-ray so far and everything they told me we have found we took we found two masses on his liver once bigger than the other one um so this is three things that it could be it could be an infection it could be a tumor or it could be cancer and i just honestly heard the word cancer and i just remember like hanging so strong in there because remember covid is going on and only one parent it's allowed in the room so nobody else could be there so i just remember like honestly like i just froze i could just hear the talk the doctor talking and i just literally froze because i i think i only talked to one person and that was my best friend because i was in the hospital and i really felt like shit i couldn't talk to my family because i did not want it nobody outside my immediate family to know what was going on just for the simple fact that I know they care so much about Leo and um, explaining to everybody the situation is like the hardest thing ever. Um, so yeah, anyways. Um, so they told me we could think it's those three things. Right away I'm like, okay, so it could be an infection. And then they're like, you know what, to be honest and sincere with you, we don't think it's an infection. This does not look like an infection. This looks like um, cancer or tumor. So I'm like, okay. And they're like, is there anything you need? Anything we could do for you? Any questions? I'm like, no, that's fine. At the moment, I didn't have no questions. And then when they were leaving, I'm just, I just told them, can I see the images? And they're like, yeah, right now we'll try to pull them up and we'll bring up the image for you and we'll try to show you the picture. So I'm like, okay, thank you. Once they close the door, my whole world literally just crashed like i feel like i was dying the first person that i called was my dad um and i just started crying sobbing and he was just like what's going on what's wrong and i couldn't talk like literally i was just crying and i just kept on telling my daddy puppy i'm gonna die i'm gonna die like like i can't do this <laughs> like i just kept on saying why leo like I was just so mad. I was so mad because if you guys know my infertility with my son and I literally it took me forever to conceive more than five years, almost like eight or nine, I think. And then I had him premature and also his stay at the NICU was awful. Like it was just bad. And he almost also like kept on like not breathing in the NICU so it wasn't a uh, easy road him being in the NICU neither and I just kept on saying why like I almost lost him in pregnancy too I almost had two miscarriages with him like two scary miscarriages like that I had to be on bed rest and I couldn't do certain things my whole journey with my son was just well it has been kind of scary you know and that's when I found out that being a parent is it's no walk in the park honestly like being a parent is scary like it's something so beautiful but it's something also so scary so yeah so i called my dad then i called um of course my husband and then my, my mom was the last one to know it was because my mom worries if i worry that woman worries just didn't want to worry her like she's really close with leo and i just didn't want to tell her so she was honestly the last one so so monday that happened in the morning on monday so on the whole day monday i kept on seeing so many doctors literally i seen like 10 different doctors or 10 different things that the 
the tumor could be so i imagine i would see a specialist and then their specialist assistant and then another specialist and their people and it just kept on going literally i didn't re re i don't remember all of their names i really don't i i was just mentally drained i was emotionally gone and it was just awful because each doctor that would come in i would tell them are you sure it's not an infection are you sure it's a tumor or cancer that was my first question to each doctor and they kept on telling me you know what well, how it's looking we honestly think it's not an infection we think it's cancer or a tumor and then i'm like okay so I would I would just remember like imagine this being in the hospital by yourself with your son and I would just remember I would just be crying and then I would cry I would just look at my baby in the in the nursery and I remember that I would just cry and he will be mommy no yours mommy don't cry please don't cry mommy so I remember that I would have to be so strong for him because he would start crying with me and that was the worst trying to be strong for him and I couldn't even do that so I remember that I would just cry at night when he was sleeping when he finally got some sleep and I would just be so mad and then on Tuesday morning one of the specialists went the one that didn't go on one day because he's he couldn't make it at the end he is a special infection disease doctor something like that and um his name i would always i will always remember his name um dr takipi um and i asked him the same thing of course <laughs> the same question i'm sorry i asked him are you sure it's not an infection and he told me you know what all my colleagues are saying it's a tumor or cancer but to be honest i think it could be an infection he is the only doctor that gave me any type of hope which i thank him because everybody else kept on telling me straight up that it was a tumor or cancer which is kind of if it's cancer you know it's cancer if it's a tumor it's still kind of bad you know and we were just waiting for um, um all these tests to come in because they did an mri according to the mris they could not still distinguish the fact if it was a tumor or a cancer so i was just more upset at the fact that they couldn't still tell they're like usually we do these type of tests and we could tell right away if it's cancer sometimes um just by looking at the image or a tumor and we honestly still don't know and then they decided to do a biopsy that was his first um small type of um procedure surgery whatever um they did a biopsy because his blood work came out that he does he didn't have any cancerous cells on the blood which they told me it was kind of good news but still not to get my hopes up because cancer is not always and that's a fight through blood so they would tell me a good news and then they would tell me but you still gotta chill because we honestly don't know 100 percent, you know but yet they tell me it's a tumor or cancer they they were 100 percent sure about that for some reason they took so long to get the results they took five days to get the results so that being said um and while all this was happening my son basically couldn't be eating he couldn't be drinking water he had of course the iv with fluid that they would give him but that you know being said he couldn't eat because of procedures he would get done or lab work that they didn't want him to have food or just the mri the biopsy everything so this happening guys i couldn't even eat myself like i would try to eat and i would throw it up i guess because i felt so worried or it was just a bad experience you know and then i remember we were still waiting for the biopsy on day three my son kept on getting worse with fevers so they decided to move us to the PICU once he got up there um they had to do so much work on him they had to like do so many um pick lines on him on his feet on his arms they tried to do some like hits on the side of the leg but the doctor kept on having a hard time and kept on moving I, that's all i kept on hearing like oh it slipped and this and that and i remember i was just seeing so much blood in there since they do whatever type of small procedures like that in there so imagine literally there was like maybe eight to ten nurses with the doctor with the just sitting in the corner um and i just remember that i guess i was so traumatized or so like i got literally lost it i think i literally lost it there because i just remember sitting down seeing so much blood and i don't know where i'm like literally i'm like where am i at why is there so many people 
like is that leo like guys like literally i i don't know what happened to me there i literally just went blank my mind went blank i so totally forgot where i was that my son was in the hospital and i just had to like once i snapped out of there i'm like oh shit like oh get your shit together you know you're you're here so they did that and he was up there for quite a while because of the fever of the fever that he was trying to fight it took five days for us to get a result of the biopsy five long days so meanwhile i wasn't eating i wasn't sleeping i wasn't drinking i was hella stressing i was um crying a lot so that being said i lost so much hair that's why i have like so much baby hair like literally guys like all this was literally i'm gonna put some images somewhere i lost a lot of hair i was so embarrassed i kept on apologizing the cleaning crew that would come each day to clean the room because i was losing literally balls of hair like from everything that would come down i could literally roll all of it out in my hand and it was balls of hair it turned out that i was in cancer so everybody was like shook because everybody thought it was a tumor it turned out it was just a simple infection it wasn't as simple because he we were there for three weeks almost three weeks so it turned out that it was just an infection and the thing is that they just couldn't explain themselves how he got that so they honestly don't know how he got it they told me that it could just be a kid that he could just be a child with really bad luck in the sense that they told me a number they i honestly want to say a million or a billion that that happens to children um and they actually thought it was some type of cancer that is really common for it to be in the liver but when they found out that it wasn't the cancer that it was just an infection they just told me straight up they told me you know what we just think it was he one little boy with really bad luck that that happened to him um they also told me that it could be because when he was a premature baby he had a procedure that they did a pick you line through his his belly button and they say that they when they do that type of picky line that sometimes they could put press in dents something like that and that maybe the bacterial his his body was doing good by destroying the bacteria but that the bacteria found those little spots and just decided to stay there and grow and then the body itself trying to like protective and get rid of the bacteria also builds walls so it was just also his body was also building walls around the bacteria that's why it took longer to detect or for him to have big symptoms because they actually told me they don't know how long he has had it it could be anywhere from him being premature or it could be literally him two months ago three months ago so they don't know um so that being said he had to have a lot of um procedures he had like five small surgeries and um they also did like a drainage by the liver so he would have to go down for all those procedures um it was just a like, bad experience and with antibiotics it took the hospital a lot of time also to try to get a uh, a specific antibiotic for the infection he had just because it was a slow growing bacteria so every time they would test it out it would take them so long to reproduce but we were also in the hospital for a while just because of that same reason and um we got released honestly the last week of july and i know i could have still been recording but the thing was that honestly i didn't feel my son still wasn't completely out of it he came home so had to be sent home with the drainage and with antibiotics and that being said trust me having a child sick at home for whatever reason it's not the same mentally like i told everybody that like already know about it being here mentally like i was better we were both better being home um but in the back of my mind i couldn't have a regular day or a regular um yeah like a regular day still knew that my son still had two abscess in his liver and honestly we didn't know how the antibiotics was gonna go we had to go back to outpatient um appointment and he still had to get some surgeries while still being at the house and um yeah so that being said like mentally honestly i wasn't there um i couldn't film just because i didn't know where my son was gonna be at as in the sense that honestly i tr i would try to laugh or smile but i'm still gonna be worried for him you know and just that alone it was it was so hard to get in front of the camera acting like if nothing is happening when my son is going through something you know his last appointment 
with the special it was last week he had another ultrasound and according to the results and everything we had to stop antibiotics and he has no more abscess in his liver which is so good i remember when he told us that and i remember when we got to the car i actually started crying because it's just been a long road for that little guy and especially it's for him you know like everything he had been through and the honestly as a parent you wish you're the one going through everything so that being said i was just thankful because he was the one going through all the pain you know so that being said like barely last week we got the results that everything's good and um we still gotta go for checkups if um he gets any fever or just if i just want to feel better comfortable if he needs an ultrasound but he told me that he should be good and the only thing i would have to say honestly honestly to any parent out there that has a sick child or that has a child any type of cancer i honestly want to tell you that you are the bravest person i have ever known because having a child sick it's uh, it's the worst pain a parent could feel my son wasn't i mean he was sick but he didn't have cancer or a tumor and it's just something scary and it's more heartbreaking knowing that there's parents and children going through that because of, and and enjoy your kids guys honestly because you never know what today will bring you and even if you have the worst a straightening day and they make a big mess or they just did something they're not supposed to do just be thankful that they're there they're active and they're doing something because trust me you guys will give anything to see them do something around the house or to see them normal and not in pain and <sighs> yeah so that's why i have been gone um just because that's been going on you guys will of course be seeing more of me around here um i just wanted to tell you guys where i have been i also have an announcement to make that'll probably be like in two more weeks i'll do the big announcement and thank you everybody who has been following me and, and thank you guys so much for still supporting me and yeah babe so this is the end of the video and i will see you guys next time um i remember a nurse her name is nicole guys she was honestly like the day she was like on the normal floor where the like not so sick kids are that's the first floor we got to um and when they took us upstairs to the PICU, I remember, um, um, I remember I just told her, you know what, um, thank you so much. You have been, her, no, her name's Sarah. I'm like, Sarah, thank you so much for everything. You have taken care of us really well, this and that. And I just started crying. I just cried, started crying, and then she just gave me a hug. And then she just told me, don't worry, your son needs to get worse before he gets better. And I remember, like, I just hugged her so tight. And I was so grateful of her because she was taking care of Leo so good, guys. Like, nurses are everything, honestly. And then we just went upstairs. And I was just saying that we weren't going to have her no more. But upstairs, we also had some amazing nurses and another one her name's nicole and um she was for the emergency area of the hospital she was also so good with leo like she, any questions i would have if she did wouldn't know she would go and search for the doctor or she would go and get them for me right away and she was just so awesome she would go beyond she drew like leo pj mass image outside his room <sighs> just because she would see how how sick he was and she was really nice with him and there's some just some people that really touch you in your heart and you know 